Welcome to Kia e Nero Diaries. Uh, we're in just about to go into the third week of the uh, lockdown here in France. Now, most of this video was made a few days ago when we were basking in the sunshine and it was like 20 degrees in the sun. It was gorgeous. Uh, this morning we had snow and uh, the thermometer on the barn said 0.1 C. So I thought I'd just do this in the barn and next to this fine machine here which is um, same age as me it was made in 1956 and it's the last thing I own that burns fossil fuels so the car the lawnmower the strimmer the chainsaw all now electric motors with lithium-ion batteries this uh, with a cutting deck on the back I use to keep the grass down in the field a couple of times a year just the brambles really because most of the time the grass we let it grow for the wildflowers to come and the insects and that's something we've started to do in the last few years and we've planted about 100 trees uh, in the field and we just cut pathways in between so anyway you may have gathered that this is not there's not going to be much uh, on this video about the e Nero. Uh, it's mostly in dock uh, as you can see here, it's. Um, I think last week we did 62 kilometres or something. We are very restricted on when we can go out with the coronavirus lockdown. In fact, I charged it up to 100% uh, two weekends ago, and we still have about 300, 350 kilometres range left on it. Uh, I think the battery was about uh, 80 something, 80%. 80 the other day. So anyway, uh, that's the e Nero. It's still there. Um, and uh, we are just, uh, you know, seeing this through as everyone else has to. We're all in the same boat here. Um, and there's things to do, although today it's been absolutely horrible uh, weather. Uh, that's hopefully going to change tomorrow and it's going to warm up and it's going to get back to the usual southwestern France sunny weather. Um, anyway, so this next video is called Carbon Confessions. So I hope you enjoy it. It's about the environment. It's just my thoughts. And uh, if you don't like it, don't bother watching any more from here on. If you just want to know about the Nero, there'll be other videos I do about that. Um, so this is just my opinion. So I hope you enjoy uh, finding out about what I call my Carbon Confessions. Hello and welcome to Kia e Nero Diaries. Uh, it's the 26th of March and we're into the second week of the coronavirus shutdown here in France. Um, and luckily for us, we're, say we're very lucky, we've got uh, plenty of land here and lots to do, uh, jobs always um, when you have a couple of acres and an old uh, farmhouse, or I suppose it's a farmhouse, um, and, a, and, a, and a barn. Uh, there it is. Uh, so a few solar panels up on the roof there. Um, so time to think, time to consider what's going on in the world today. Um, and this whole idea of just having a think um, brings me, brings to my mind anyway, the, uh, the, the, the excellent YouTube site uh, by that name, Just Have a Think. Um, uh, it's very well produced, very well researched and it looks at the environmental problems that we face and it's not all doom and gloom it's about solutions and methods that we can employ to mitigate um, some of the environmental disasters that we are imposing on the world and it is quite interesting that uh, with very much of the world now um, <clears throat> in coronavirus lockdown the economic activity is obviously reduced, so there's a lot less flying. Uh, some airlines have cut most of their services, or at least 80, 90 percent of their services. There's a lot less driving. Um, I saw some satellite data recently from northern Italy where the nitrogen dioxide levels, uh, the nitrous oxide levels, and of course CO2 are all well down. So those cities are a lot cleaner. So we have now benchmark against which we could imagine what a post-fossil fuel world would be like in terms of transport anyway and the benefits that will come from that 
But, uh, you know, us people who drive electric cars, you know, we can walk around with a sort of a smug, smug mode grin on our faces. And it does feel good, to be honest, I have to say that I don't have to buy petrol anymore. Um, that when I use the car, at least it's not putting out any emissions. Although, of course, any car, or any big product like that uh, produces a lot of CO2 in its production. Um, so you know we you know we're not uh, we're not exemplars of greenery if we simply choose an electric car, but it is a better choice, I believe. Uh, but I thought you know it's uh, while I'm sort of uh, happy to have an electric car, I do realise that I owe a big carbon debt personally. So I tried to work out the other day what um, how much carbon as a result of my driving around. I put into the uh, atmosphere. So these are my carbon confessions. So carbon confessions then. Well, I passed my driving test in 1974 in one of these. Uh, then I had one of these. And then I needed something a bit bigger because I was playing in bands and doing that kind of late teenage stuff. So I had one of these. Um, then I had one of these and then I got a, I started working as a computer service engineer, uh, just uh, qualified then um, in electronic engineering and uh, so I started having company cars. So I had one of these and then one of these. These are kind of more newer cars to the sort of early 60s stuff I'd been driving around in. Um, and then uh, shock horror, one of these, and one of these, and one of these. So on it goes. So anyway, it tries. Uh, you know, it's difficult to work out what the CO2 is. Obviously, more recent vehicles uh, have to say what their um, uh, carbon dioxide emissions are per kilometre of driving, on average. Although of course we can't always believe these manufacturer manufacturers' figures. Um, and there are some celebrated cases of why we shouldn't do that. But I've tried to work out, I, I've got a pretty good memory for how many miles I did in these various cars and what the odometer readings were, and I knew pretty much what my annual mileage of driving was. So uh, the more recent cars, obviously, that I've owned, um, I've been able to research what the CO2 emissions per kilometre were those in terms of uh, grams per kilometer but obviously older cars were not so efficient although I had a pretty good idea of what the miles per gallon were and the size of the engines uh, back then now I mean if you go back far enough to the early cars I drove they were probably running on unleaded petrol so horrendous things um, but anyway I've worked out that over 46 yeah, 46 years of driving driven about 700,000 miles and I've tried to include in that rental cars. I've rented cars all over the world on my travels and uh, for, for business and, and pleasure too. Uh, so that's about 1.1 million kilometers which I mean it's not excessive. I, I used to do some years 25, 30,000 miles a year and now you know, much less than that. I, I've averaged out, I think, about 15, 16,000 over my driving life so far. So what does that all add up to? Well, I reckon it's somewhere in the region of 220 metric tonnes. That's kind of scary. That's just me. And that doesn't include, that's just my driving. That doesn't include the flights I've made, I, I've worked for companies in the US and I've been all over the States, long haul flights, some of them club class, which is even worse, um, and South Africa, all over Europe. So it's really a big carbon debt. So anyway, those are my carbon confessions. And, you know, it's quite interesting that most people, if you mention to them, you know, the fact that, oh, they're driving this car or that car and they're, as soon as they turn their engine on, they are polluting the atmosphere or as soon as they're taking that long haul flight. And I think it's important that we're not trying to point the finger at people here, that you know, people do get very prickly when you uh, 
challenge their lifestyle. Although with this coronavirus lockdown, uh, it's making us think again about what we really need. And what we really need is access to food and access to medicines. And most other things are just discretionary spending, really, when you think about it. Um, so whether this will sort of tone down things a bit in terms of, um, you know, the, uh, the sort of uh, amount of CO2 and other pollutants we're putting into the atmosphere, I doubt it. But it will at least be a benchmark against which we can measure. We can measure how much cleaner the air was during the shutdown. How much, I mean, already we've seen pictures of fish swimming around in the lagoon in Venice. Now the um, vaporettos are, <laughs> are not running around, uh, you know, with tourists. Uh, these these boats uh, there. I actually went there once. Very nice place. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, it is important not to point the finger, but again, we must learn the consequences. I mean, it's like. Uh, you know, when you're a kid, you learn if you do certain things, there are consequences of doing those, of taking those actions. And so when you turn the key of your uh, internal combustion engine car, the consequence is that somebody's house in Australia burns down or somebody's house in England floods. Now, that's kind of, whoa, where are we going with this? But it's absolutely true that there are people uh, who've watched their houses burn down in Australia and haven't made the connection between the burning of fossil fuels in their big V8 truck or whatever it is, or they're flying off to Bali for their holidays and their house burning down. Now, this, it's just the way things are. It's, it's, there is a link between these things. Likewise, the flooding in the UK, you know, we're getting a lot more rain because why? The atmosphere is warmer, warm air holds more moisture. So, you know, we're getting more rainfall at certain times of year and we're getting more droughts in other places in the world. So there are consequences of our actions. It's not a good thing that everybody were to rush out and buy an electric car. That would be absolutely crazy. For a start, there are 1.4 billion private vehicles, cars and vans on the world's roads. And the world's factories working flat out can only make about 90 million a year. Now imagine every one of those was an electric car. And from today, everybody bought an electric car. That would be absolutely crazy to try to replace that lot. It would still take 15 years to replace them. The most important thing, I think, is that, and, it, and, and likewise, it would be wrong to say to people, you can't ever fly again. That, that would be stupid. But the, the most important thing is that we make the connection, that we understand that our actions have consequences, and we start to think about what we might do to change that. We're part of the problem, we're the cause of the problem, we have to be part of the solution, else collectively we're toast. And I think COVID-19, <clears throat> which is going to sadly take the lives of a lot of, a lot of people, uh, is maybe going to help us to think about this. I don't know. But anyway, that's my sort of rant for today and my carbon confessions, or at least from my driving. It's really scary when you add it up that just me driving around has put 220,000 kilograms. That's right, it's 1,000 kilograms in a metric tonne. 220,000 kilograms of CO2 from driving around. It's crazy. I'm sure future generations will look back at this and say, God, those guys were, were really crazy. But then again, they didn't know any better. And that's always the case when we look back in the past and we look at what people did. Why, why did they do that? Anyway, thank you for watching. Really appreciate the, um, the, uh, the number of people who watched my last video having owned the Kia e-Niro for a year. There will be more coming about the e-Niro, though I'm not using it very much at the moment because we are grounded. It's now in France, only one person can go out at a time. So I have to sign a little piece of paper. So if I'm stopped by the police, I can, I can say where I live, uh, why I'm in the car or why I'm out walking the dog or whatever it is I'm doing. Um, so they are really cracking down here and it has to be done because an awful lot of people are going to suffer unless we can uh, at least slow down and eventually stop this virus. So thank you very much. Stay in and stay safe.